Welcome back kids. Today we will be showing you how we are going to be setting up the temporary shelter that we will be making where we can spray, sand, and everything else that we need to fix the body of our car. My producer and cameraman Brunelli got me this portable garage from Harbor Freight. Good boy Brunelli. The problem with the tents that Harbor Freight offers is that they're not strong enough to last the winters that Teddy Land has here. I mean, last year, we had so many Teddy's houses, roofs collapse, and I mean, that's a terrible way to die. Mm. So what we will be showing you is how to reinforce this tent so that it's strong enough to last through the winters and the weather and everything else that we may come across. It's always a good idea to first count all your parts to make sure you have everything. I've already done that, and now I'm going to put together the metal frame so that I can take measurements for my reinforcements. tall pieces together. Eureka! straw is a lot like the steel tubes used in the frame of this tent. It has a lot of compressive strength, means you can push on it really hard and it'd be perfectly fine. It also has a lot of tensile strength, which means you can pull on it. Now you'll notice, when I try and push this relay with this straw, it'll do a perfectly good job. However, when I do this, it'll stay like that permanently, as will a steel tube. and it can't push it at all. Walls made out of tubing like this will skew or twist in high winds or other types of pressure. Now, if you're inside when it skews or twists, well, 
That's a terrible way to die. Now let me ask you something. What would Chris Hemsworth do to reinforce this? Chris Hemsworth would put in cross braces. Now you notice, when the tent skews, the distance between this point and this point gets longer. So, if you put in a cross brace with tensile strength, that's not possible. You will also notice that if the tent tries to twist, the distance between this point and this point gets shorter. So, if you have a cross brace with compressive strength, it won't happen. This is a wall with cross braces, and this is a wall without. If I try and push this relay this way, it can't because it introduces a skew. However, with this one, it can. Now, if I try and push it this way, it can't either because it introduces a twist. Now, this wall, however, once again, can. Now, as you can see, Chris Hemsworth would clearly choose a wall with cross braces so we can get rid of this one. The other problem that needs to be solved with this tent is that this tent needs to last a year, and we have terrible winters here in Teddyland. So I'm going to be creating a rigid roof to help support the snow. Our roof panels need to be 47 inches long. I'm going to be using 2x4s for my roof end beams. My roof has a 22 and a half degree pitch, so I'm going to be ripping the top edge of my 2x4s to meet that angle. I'm going to change the angle of my blade to 22 and a half degrees first. Now I'm going to change the height of my blade so that it can reach through my 2x4. Now I'm going to set up my rip fence to the right length. Now I'm ready to start ripping. Remember kids, safety first. I should be using a blade guard because falling face first into a spinning blade is a terrible way to die. However, it often gets in the way when ripping, so I can't right now. I am going to be using my safety glasses and my earplugs. four rafters and I don't want them to be as heavy as normal 2x4s so I ripped them in half lengthwise so that now they are 1x4 nominal. I've cut all my pieces including 60 noggins out of 1x2 furring strips and now I'm going to assemble my roof panels using first my brad nailer to temporarily hold the pieces in place then next with screws to permanently keep them there. These roof panels are very lightweight so that they're easy to lift into place and so that they don't add too much weight to the structure of the tent. The rafters and noggins should give enough support for the tent to withstand a heavy snow as long as I get out and rake the snow off the next day. I'm going to countersink all my screw holes, that way the screw heads don't stick into my fabric.
This piece of furring strip creates a lip where adjoining roof panels can be attached. For extra protection against abrading the tent fabric, I'm covering all screw heads with duct tape. Now it's time to assemble the ridge beam. The ridge beam is basically a pocket over the ridge tube on the tent. It allows the two sides of the roof panels to connect at the peak. During final assembly, a small collar beam will bridge the two sides of the ridge beam at each rafter intersection. My tent needs a rigid floor so I can wheel heavy equipment in it and jack up the car. So now I'm going to move my sawhorses out of the way so I can get to work on my floor. I'm elevating the floor off the ground with 2x3s. If I needed this floor to last more than about a year, I would use pressure treated lumber. If I intended this to be a permanent shed, then I would put down gravel first and maybe some cemented corner posts. I'm using two layers of half inch OSB for the flooring. Pre-drilling holes makes the screws go in much easier. Now I'm going to move my frame onto my floor and start my final assembly. The front and back of the tent fabric goes on first. The tent comes with 18 inch anchors that are supposed to be twisted into the ground. Instead, I'm anchoring the tent to the floor. Given the weight of the floor and the weight of the car that is going to be on it, it'll stay put with no trouble. The ridge beam assembles in three pieces, and then the roof panels are tacked to the ridge beam to hold them in place.
I notch the end beams to clear the tent tubing and then put them in place. Now I can pull the main tent cover up and over the roof panels with some rope that I've temporarily attached to the bottom rails at the near side. These 2x4 studs will daughter the tent poles to prevent them from buckling and to help carry the additional weight of the roof panels and snow accumulation. I'm using scissor braces attached to the rafters to ensure that the roof won't give in under the weight of snow and to increase the tent's resistance to winds that come from the side. I'm using furring strips to cross brace the walls. Diagonal braces against the base of each of the wall studs increase the tent's resistance to sideways wind loads. I've finished reinforcing my tent, and as you can see, it'll be able to handle one of Teddy Land's storms. Now the only thing left is to clean up and extend the tarp about a foot and a half. That way, the floor won't get wet. Now for the finishing touches. Chris Hemsworth. <coughs> that was a lot of work, wasn't it, Brayley? <coughs> now I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some refreshments. Go Can you drop your hat, sir? As always, this show is filmed in front of a live studio audience.